is th there's a lot of moving parts. And the, the first for me is if I'm going to take a shot at an animal, I, I want the thing to, to die as quickly as humanly possible and, and as cleanly as humanly possible, almost not knowing that that's what's happened to them. And but at the same time, you have to do that when maybe you've been in the field sleeping on the floor and hiking for days on end. So you're pretty tired. You're pretty grubby. It could often be raining. Um, and yet you've still got to get to that one little split second where you're going to manage your emotions, manage your heart rate and take a shot that's going to be the very, very best version of you so that you actually are not just maiming an animal unnecessarily. And, and I think that's what people think happens is that the animal suffers for ages and people go out there and bugger it up for want of a better phrase. I think that might have been true a while ago, but the folks I've been meeting recently, that's definitely not true of them. Yeah, I, I don't even think it was ever. I think everybody for as long as I've been hunting, most people go out with the intentions of one shot, one kill, mm. clean, you know, as humane as possible. I've never, I shouldn't say never, I have met one or two bad seeds out there in my life that they don't really care. And it's unfortunate. You know, I think you could find that bad seed in any little, any little thing that you, you can talk about. There's always got to be that one person that just doesn't do the the sport or the activity or whatever justice because they're that type of person. But for the most part, by I think by far 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 and large that most hunters want to have the most clean kill as possible, and it shows because. Most people spend a lot of time, like you said, practicing, perfecting their crafts. It's not just so that they can get one. It's just so they can, they can get one the right way, you know? Mm. So what was it for you that took you away from the rifle and towards the bow? Um, I don't, you know, I think I really honestly don't really know. I don't know. I think at one point I felt that rifle hunting was unfair. <laughs> Honestly, like I felt like it was unfair maybe. Like, I don't know. I, 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 I can shoot really far. Um, and I've always been naturally a good marksman with a rifle. Like even as a kid, like, I mean, I could shoot a sparrow with a BB gun at, you know, 50 meters with the open sights. And, and it was like nothing to me, you know, and I might sound like conceited, this conceited bastard right now saying that, but it, it was just, it was easy for me. And, uh, so I was originally, I think I got into it cause I was looking for something that was more of a challenge. Um, and then I think anybody who ever shoots a bow, there's a romanticism with it. There's like, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I, I know they talk about the, uh, I've heard people talk about the mesmerizing flight of the arrow or there's something, I don't know. Maybe it, it might be ancestral. I don't know what it is, but something about shooting a bow because you're part of, you're part of it all. Mm. Like you're connected with what the, with the equipment. Even on a compound bow or whatever, you're you're still you're part of the machine. Really, the only thing part of the machine when you're using a gun is your finger. You know, if you can control your finger, your trigger pull, and you got a great rest, then the gun's a machine. It's gonna, do, I don't know, the bow is a machine too. It's gonna do the same thing, basically time in, in time out. But the problem, the thing about a bow is you are in the machine. You're part of the machine. So your body mechanics and all that stuff, and when you become part of that, it's like it's just more of a rewarding. I don't know, and then you know the the closer proximity of the shots and and all that stuff just kind of comes into play. Uh, but eventually, I found my way back to rifle hunting. Also, like I found a new love for it. Um, I started hunting differently with a rifle in my hand. Um, 
my, I changed my goals. Um, I just, and then I just, I, I love it again now, you know, I, I, there was actually a point in my life, I'd say 20 years plus ago, maybe that I kind of looked down my nose at rifle hunting. Hmm. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm not proud of it, but I did. Uh, but also in that time frame too, I was like, I, I wouldn't use a range finder. Um, I became kind of a boat snob, you know, <laughs> just a short period of time. But, um, you know, I thought that was cheating. I thought, you know, and then eventually I, oh, I won't even think about taking a shot without, you know, oh, I shouldn't say that. There's, there's a certain range that I'm, I know I'm confident enough to, um, to estimate the range in my head without having to use one. But, you know, for the most part, I would, it's just more ethical. I mean, why would I want a chance of wounding an animal mm. by not just so I could say, I, you know, I'm great ranger. Who gives a shit? <laughs> it's like, check out the size of my you know. penis. Um, 